Hey everyone, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on DNA replication. So let's get right into it with our first key concept here. DNA replication copies the genetic information of a cell. A very, very important process that we're going to learn step by step here. But first we've got to figure out why does DNA have to replicate? Well, each cell needs a complete set of DNA in order to be able to function and make proteins and everything that the cell needs. And before a cell can divide to make more cells, it's got to copy that DNA or replicate it in order to give that full set to the new cell. So let's look at the steps of DNA replication. So first step, you have a DNA molecule that has two original strands because remember we have a double helix. So two strands wrapped around each other um, and that is what we need to start with in order for the cell to start dividing. So how do we replicate it? How do we copy that? Well, we need a couple of different enzymes to help us out. So enzymes, uh, like helicase in this case, helicase is going to actually, what we would say, unzip the DNA molecule. Because remember, we have those nucleotides held together by hydrogen bonds, and helicase is going to break those hydrogen bonds between the bases, and therefore we're going to unzip and have two different strands now uh, from the original. So you can see that in the picture down there. So helicase unzips that uh, double-stranded DNA. So you see a little better picture of it right here. The next step is we have another enzyme that comes in called DNA polymerase. And that's going to add free nucleotides that pair up with the original strand. So we have those two original strands that have been unhooked from each other or unzipped. And now DNA polymerase comes in and starts adding the A's, T's, C's, and G's to each of those original strands because we're going to make a copy. We're going to end up with two double helices after we're done. So DNA polymerase comes in, pairs the A with the T and the C's with the G's as you can see in the picture right there. So we are slowly creating a copy. So in the fourth step, after we have copied everything and we added all those nucleotides, we need some way to stick everything back together. So we've already broken it with helicase, added nucleotides with DNA polymerase, and now we need to use what's called DNA ligase, another enzyme that is going to glue everything or zip everything back together. It's going to glue the new strand that we just made to the old strand that it uh, was made uh, as the copy of. So what you really need to understand here is that two brand new DNA molecules are formed, but each of those molecules has an original strand that we started with, and it's got a new strand. Okay, So, because of this, we call DNA replication a semi-conservative process. Because, as you can see in the blue there, that's an original strand, and red is a newly synthesized strand after replication. So if you start with a double helix with two blue strands, once you go through DNA replication, you are going to have two different DNA molecules, each of them containing one original strand and one new strand. Okay, so that's the semi-conservative model there in number one. It's not, we don't have the conservative model that you see over there in number two. So just remember, semi-conservative, we are conserving part of the original DNA molecule, the original strand. And there, right there, is a better picture of how you have the original strand, which is blue, and the new strand, which is orange. So two different molecules, one with an original and one with a new strand. And the very last thing here is DNA replication is actually pretty accurate. Um, DNA polymerase, by the way, there's a bunch of different DNA polymerases and they're numbered, but you don't have to worry about that just yet. Uh, but DNA polymerase also acts as a proofreader for the nucleotides and it actually will correct errors as it goes. That doesn't mean that some errors go uncorrected because that's how you get certain mutations, but DNA polymerase does its best to add those nucleotides and if it adds a C instead of a T where it was supposed to, it goes back and proofreads that just to make sure that it is as accurate as possible.